Hello, this is the RPG Pundit, the final boss in internet shitlords. I've just uh, come home from a dinner party. <laughs> I just finished a pipe and uh, thought I should do a video. Uh, but first I wanted to mention that, uh, because it's relevant also to what I'm about to talk about, that uh, over the last few days I've done a number of uh, videos and live streams that weren't on this channel, besides on Sunday having done an episode of Inappropriate Characters, where Joe Venger and I made fun of the the idiotic recent D&D &D artwork and uh, uh, crazy Kickstarter. Um, there was also a interview I did with the Red Room. Uh, there's Meatball. Hey, Meatball. <laughs> She's right in front of us here. Um, I did an interview with the Red Room where I was talking a lot about the Invisible College and uh, not just about the, the game, but also about kind of the history of Hermeticism, its role and influence in the creation of the modern world, and uh, even the story of my own very weird introduction to, uh, to Western occultism, which was a, a very strange and unexpected way to have, to have gotten involved in it. So be sure to check out the Red Room channel. They don't have a lot of followers right now. They're kind of new. And uh, they're well worth checking out because they've done some very interesting interviews with a number of people who are game designers. Uh, really good stuff. So take a look at that. But uh, the one that undoubtedly caught the most attention was the one I did on Dolly Pop's channel. And you should totally check her out and subscribe. Um, which was a, a panel live stream that featured Dolly Pop, myself, and Taylor Lane, who is uh, an OSR game designer who is uh, kind of new, and, uh, you know, Dolly Pop is a woman, obviously, in, in, uh, and she's uh, involved in the OSR. Um, you might know her from Aaron the Pedantics channel. And uh, Taylor Lane is agendered and uh, queer. And uh, the three of us together did a panel on gender. And the SJWs lost their minds. <laughs> the woke people went nuts about it. It was just great. Uh, so, you know, that's kind of the topic of, of the uh, video tonight. Um, not just about their reaction, but also of something that was kind of expressed or revealed in the process of that, um, of that live stream and the subsequent reaction to it. So the interesting thing, as was pointed out to me, is that um, the SJWs obviously don't like me. We all know that, right? Like that's, that's, that's nothing new. There's no, yeah, that's not breaking news. But after this video, the people they went after super hard were Dolly Pop and Taylor Lane. And uh, it's for pretty obvious reasons, because um, as much as they hate me, and as much of a thorn as I am in their sides, in many ways, I'm less dangerous than either of my two co-panelists. Because the, the fable, the myth that the, that the wokists want you to believe is that the, the real OSR, you know, the inglorious OSR as I call it, is just a club of cishet white males or something like that who are gatekeepers and don't want anybody who isn't a cis head white male to play and certainly wouldn't support game designers that weren't that and all of that sort of thing right and uh dolly pop and taylor both prove the lie to that dolly pop is quite dangerous because here she is um she's a female gamer she has her own channel she's doing videos that have uh, had good reaction to them about gaming on a number of topics including that she does videos that are about, like, gamer horror stories, you know, very much from a female perspective, which, on the surface, if you look at, like, the subject matter, would look like the kind of thing that you would expect from, say, a feminist YouTube channel, right? But the big difference is that when Dolly Pop talks about them, she points them out as, like, an example of problematic behavior that is um, a special and exemplary uh, case of bad behavior and not um, an example that proves somehow that all, you know, gamers are toxic and, uh, and you know, that all gamers are prejudiced or, or things like that, right? 
So in her videos, she's actually undermining the message that the wokists want to send. She's creating a, a, a counter message that says, yeah, these things, when they happen, are really freaking. We should all look at them and, and we should see them as, as the ridiculous thing that they are. And that maybe even, you know, we need to pay some attention to that, right? Because, of course, sometimes the instinctual counter reaction to when you hear these, these stories of bad behavior, because the intersectional feminists and group like that have gone out of their way to claim that this is the endemic problem that all gaming groups that are that are you know traditional gaming groups are like this and that every gamer is like this um the reaction from people who are regular gamers might be to want to say no those things don't even happen right they don't exist well of course they happen but they're super rare right and the and and so if you can look at them and say yeah okay you know you got to call out bad behavior when you see bad behavior right um, but that doesn't mean that that's that that's the regular norm. It, on the contrary, we all look at these as gamer horror stories because they are the exception to the norm. They're they're really terrible, crazy incidents of unusual behavior that is not in any way typical to what normal people who are normal gamers play like. Right. Um, so she's a problem for them. And of course, Taylor Lane is a gigantic problem for them because they are someone who, who initially was very much involved with kind of the indie sword dream type anti-OSR, let's say, or inverse OSR, or bizarre OSR, however you want to call it, right? Because, I mean, obviously, they, you look at the, at the general hype that gets pushed by these, these wokists, and the perception is, over here, the, the real OSR are this group of prejudiced, bigoted gatekeepers. And if you're someone who isn't a cis white male, they will attack you and insult you and, and harass you. And, uh, you know, they won't buy your games and they won't be interested in anything you have to say because all they care about is if you're a straight white male, right? <laughs> and then on the other side, the wokists themselves present this thing about, oh, we're all about inclusion and diversity and we're a community and they seem very cuddly, right, uh, in, the, in the abstract. And, uh, you know, to be fair, in the abstract, the OSR doesn't make a point of trying to look cuddly at all, right? Like most OSR gamers um, are pretty, you know, they act like gamers, right? So they're like, yeah, we, we don't, we only care about, you know, the games and we, we only care about, uh, you know, what's, uh, what's, what's cool in gaming, right? And, and, uh, and you know, they, they're, uh, the OSR is often and very understandably grumpy in its abstract presentation of itself because they see the mess that is being done of the game that they love, right? So they look surly in the abstract. Uh, but the thing is that Taylor, and, and they talk about this in the, in the live stream with, um, with me and, and, and Dolly, um, when they actually experienced what the woke OSR was like, they found it to be this, this in, internally oppressive environment, right? This place where you have this little inner circle of the super cool kids. And they're, the way that they're structured, having evolved also from the story game movement, is that you have this tiny group of people who are the self-styled elite of that group, and they've created this downward pecking order because they, they see success or popularity as dependent on their maintaining their elitism, right? So that means they have to put huge barriers for anyone that's just starting to be accepted or to be promoted or to be supported. And so instead of being a supportive environment, what they do is they create this situation where if, if, if you're not one of the existing elites, then your job when you get there is to do whatever they say, obey what they say, repeat what they want you to repeat, um, promote the products of the elite, not your own product, and, and basically behave. And if you're a, a sufficiently good bootlicker, then eventually you might be able to make your way up this, this pyramid scheme of theirs, because that's what it is, right? Their whole system is this kind of pyramid scheme where they demand that the stuff that is by the, by the special inner circle gets promoted and 
and retweeted and shared and, and supported and backed and all of that to create this illusion that these people are more successful than they are. And everybody else has to play that game if they want to get the crumbs of recognition from these elites. And when Taylor Lane wasn't all that cooperative, then these people uh, basically started to, you know, downvote them in a way and put them in a, in a position where they were increasingly hostile because it was, it was you know, they, they didn't want to give any support to someone who isn't playing along with the pyramid scheme. And I got meatballs completely blocking the view. We, your your view now is of meatballs ass, basically. That's okay though. I know that you guys probably are are as into seeing meatball as anything else here. So there we go. Um, anyway, so uh, you know, especially what happened is that Taylor started you know interacting with other people in the regular OSR. And they were warned not to do that, right? That that's, that's a big no-no. You are not meant to interact. You're not meant to even look at these things because this is, this is uh, you know, the evil stuff. And you're not even meant to judge for yourself whether it's evil. You're told it's evil and you will stay away from it, right? And you'll certainly not try to talk to any of these people. But Taylor didn't listen and Taylor started talking to people and found out that even though the woke uh, SR look on the on the abstract level to be all welcoming and community minded and 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 uh, you know inclusive and all of that, they're actually pretty brutal on the individual level. Whereas the OSR looks gruff and surly on the abstract level, but on the individual level, we're surprisingly open to talking to discussing things. They were interested in in subjects that that you bring up if you're bringing up interesting subjects right and they're interested in products for their merit not for who made them obviously but that doesn't matter if you're making good product and so you know the 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 double side of that is that you're having any kind of special diversity qualification isn't going to give you anything right because uh that's not how it works in the osr but the the flip side of that is that you're also not going to be in any way discriminated against for whatever your qualifications in the diversity scheme are, that just doesn't matter. It just doesn't figure into it. So the only thing that figures into it is, are you making cool stuff? Are you making cool stuff for the uh, OSR? And so Taylor started making some stuff. It got, you know, I paid attention to. I, I interacted with Taylor. They found to my <laughs> to, to their surprise that I wasn't some kind of monster. That I didn't attack them, you know. <laughs> and uh, and uh, it must have been a a bit of a surprise given what they probably had heard. And uh, you know, their stuff is interesting. They make interesting things, right? So I promoted it, <laughs> and that was just unbelievable to the to the SJWs, right? They just couldn't. That that's something they couldn't possibly tolerate, you know. So, yeah, you know, the reactions have been really funny because uh, all over the social media, you've had attacks that have been mainly focused on Dolly and Taylor. Uh, because I'm kind of old hat, and like I said, in a way, I'm less dangerous than 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 the two of them are. Um, and you know, in the process, they also created this narrative of what that um, of what that that live stream was like, right? Like, and and because none of them are allowed to actually go and watch the live stream. It's right there on Dolly Pop's channel, right? But they can't watch it. Only the, the elite inner circle can watch it to, to, knit, to, to cherry pick things that they might want to point out to attack with, right? But everybody else has to just assume whatever the narrative is that the, that the elites present to their group. So it ends up creating a bunch of confabulations of things that never happened and were never said. How badly, you know, you might be saying, well, come on, Pundit, how much... How, how much could they warp the reality of what happened, right? Well, you know, there were tweets that, that they were putting out that um, implied that Varg Vikerns was a panelist, you know, noted neo-Nazi and murderer Varg Vikerns was a panelist on this show, which I guarantee you he wasn't. Go watch the show, right? But somewhere along the line, 
either intentionally, probably by some people, or accidentally because they, they, uh, they weren't allowed to watch it and so they just somehow made the assumption that, you know, this guy that, that would never be invited to something like this and that has nothing to do with the OSR uh, was, was there, <laughs> and was, was a panelist. So, you know, that tells you just how completely fake news these guys are, right? Um, so, you know, that's, that's really quite remarkable when you think about it, just how far into, uh, into crazy land they really are. But, but the more important thing is that it shows um, what the real difference is and where there is actually an open environment of, um, of discussion, but also an open environment of, of equal opportunity for everybody, right? Because the, the OSR, the one thing they're going to judge you on, the only thing they're going to judge you on is what your product is like. If you make good product, you will be successful in the regular OSR. Whereas with the woke OSR, that hardly matters at all. The product that you make can be garbage if you are part of the right group. If you're not, you're not going to be um, you're not going to be successful. And the right group doesn't just mean the right like demographic group, because obviously yes, that is a part of it. But another part of it is that being in the right group means you have to fall into their inner circle. So it's not enough you know, to just be someone that is, uh, you know, part of the LGBT rainbow or a person of color or, or a feminist or something like that. You also have to play the game of making your way into the group that is, that is supposed to be the really great people in the, in the woke OSR, you know, they're, they're top, they're best of the best, you know, <laughs> but, uh, but that best of the best is just determined by the pyramid scheme and that's it, you know? So it's, uh, pretty ridiculous. Um, and you know, the, the, this is again, Taylor Lane is very dangerous to them because if they're, if they're accepted into the OSR and if they're promoted by people in the, you know, the regular OSR, then, uh, you know, this is, this is a, a massive way of showing the lie, right? And other people who maybe always assumed that what the woke OSR was claiming about us is true and that, they, that, that somebody who doesn't fit the cis white heterosexual male mode was going to be the only what was going to be uh, automatically excluded from the OSR or something like that um, have suddenly seen if they see this about you know uh, somebody like Taylor being treated like a regular human being just like we you know generally treat everyone I mean some of us are assholes to each other but we're always equal opportunity assholes right it's 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 just about you know uh, you know, there, I, I'm not going to pretend that there aren't some some personal conflicts in the regular OSR for various reasons, or that we criticize each other, and obviously sometimes we make fun of each other, usually in a good-hearted way, right? You see that with, you know, Venger and me, for example, or you know, we might make fun of Grim Jim's lefty politics and stuff, but you know, he makes good stuff, so that's that's great. <laughs> like he's still welcome, you know, even if he's a socialist. You know, so if we're even accepting socialists, we're definitely going to accept anybody else, as long as what they're doing is making good product and they're standing up for free speech and, and open discourse, right? Those are the things we care about. That, those are the things that we, we want to see. And if you come in with that perspective and you just, you know, you want to participate and the conversation that you make and the products that you make are good, then you're very likely to have a successful place in the OSR. So if this starts a trend, then the wokes are in huge trouble, right? Because suddenly it, it, it proves that everything they were saying was a lie. And that, um, and that suddenly, you know, they, they don't have a captive audience of people who feel like they have nowhere else to go. It's a very interesting turn of events, let's say. So uh, I guess that's it for today. Um, just uh, remember to subscribe. Uh, check out Dolly Pop's channel and subscribe to it if you can. And check out The Red Room and subscribe to them too. And if you want to support me, I mean, uh, you know, one of the things that the wokists always say is, the RPG Pundit is a failure. He has hardly anyone on his Patreon. It's true. I have hardly anyone on my Patreon because I tell people, you know, that you're better off supporting me by buying my products. Now, if you've bought every single one of my products, 
or if, I don't know, if you like the cut of my jib, but don't like any of my games for some weird reason, then you want to support me, you can get on Patreon and, and give me money every month for nothing, right? Because there's nothing special that you get from my Patreon. But it's a really nice, and I really am grateful to anyone who supports me that way. But if you're a gamer and you haven't already got all of the, the <laughs> over a hundred products that I've made, uh, then check out my stuff, right? Check out The Invisible College. Uh, if, if you watch the interview I do at the, the Red Room, you'll learn a lot more about it and you'll probably find it very interesting. Check out World of the Last Sun, Lion and Dragon. Check out all my other books. And, and if, you, if you're cash strapped and you, you don't have the money to buy a, um, a book, even though, you know, my books tend to, I always try to make my books as affordable as possible. Um, but let's say you've only got a few bucks. I have the RPG Pundit Presents series, which is currently 106 issues in the RPG Pundit Presents series, each of which is a product for OSR play. Some of them are medieval authentic, some of them are weird fantasy and gonzo, some are adventures, some are source books, some are mechanics that you can use for any OSR game or any game based on D&D. And so you're out of those 106 titles, you're bound to find not, not just one, but probably several of them that you'll think you'll be able to use in your gaming. And there's nothing I like more. You know, that's one of the qualities of the real OSR. The woke OSR doesn't care if you ever use their products. They just care that you that you pledge for them on Kickstarter or something. And, and the reward you get for that is that you virtue signaled and then they pat you on the head because you were a, a good little soldier, right? But uh, in the real OSR, everybody who makes products in the real OSR care not just that you buy their games, but that you find them useful and end up being able to use them in your games. And that's why we make better products. You know? <laughs> so, so check all of that out. And, and you know, the RPG Planet Presents is just, uh, it costs you a few bucks. It's like you're buying me a coffee, but you're getting something in return and you're supporting me and supporting my cause and continuing with my videos. Um, stay tuned in the future for a lot more review videos if you like that kind of thing, because right now, besides all of the um, Lamentations books that I just got. I got a few other very interesting OSR books that have that have just arrived. One more that's on its way. So I, I'm guessing I'm going to have to do a lot of review videos soon because uh, they're they're piling up. Um, I know that a lot of you though prefer my rant videos to my reviews, and I promise you that those aren't going anywhere. You know, <laughs> at least as long as there's stupid people saying or doing stupid things in the RPG world, I'm going to keep doing those too. So uh, check back for more. Uh, currently smoking nothing, but I just finished smoking a uh, Meister de Baia with Lakeland Flake. <laughs> and that's it for today.